Sup guys, Extreme Edge here, aka Gaming Review Punk. What I'm going to do today is review two games in one video, simply because those two games are pretty short and there won't be a lot to talk about. So I'm going to review two Star Wars video games, which are Star Wars Episode 1, Obi-Wan's Adventures, and Star Wars Arcade. Well, let's just go ahead and get started with the first game. Alright, so the first game I'm going to review in this video is Star Wars Episode 1. Obi-Wan's Adventures for the Game Boy Color. This game was developed by Hot Gen. Now, I never heard of Hot Gen before, so I looked them up on Wikipedia. So, it looks like they're a video game developer based in London, and they work for Jack Specifics, if that's how you pronounce it. Plus, they help develop handheld TV games, but they also develop only 9 games. After 2009, they were never heard of since, so yeah. Then this game was published by THQ. It was released in November the 27th in the year of 2000. Well, that basic information is out of the way for this game, so let's check it out. And I'm gonna go ahead and talk about it, so yeah, here we go. So, when we start the game, we have pictures being shown of Obi-Wan from Episode 1, The Phantom Menace, and then the press start menu. Nothing much to say about the main menu, I mean all we have is start game, options, and password, so at level 1, it's taking place with the Trade Federation blockage of the planet Naboo, just like in episode 1 from the movie, and you'll have to find a way to escape the hangar, and that's where Obi-Wan puts his skills to the test. Now, to talk about the gameplay and all, well, my first thoughts when the game started was, okay, wow, the graphics are kind of murky with his visuals, and they have a lack of color, is what I'm going to say. I mean, look at Obi-Wan. Of course you can't see his face, but his hair looks great to me. I know he doesn't have gray hair, come on now. Unless I'm just colorblind, but I don't believe that I am, so yeah. Even other people that get feedback about this game say the same thing with the graphics. Plus, I read that someone say that this game loses out badly in the graphic department. I do have to agree with it. Look, I know it's a Game Boy Color game, but come on now. Anyways, I'm just gonna go ahead and move on. So the gameplay, you can move your character around, you can slash your lightsaber, you can jump. The jump doesn't look like it's doing much, all it looks like Obi-Wan is doing is just skipping. But hey, at least killing the droids is not bad. It's a good thing you can just swing your lightsaber like you would go for an attack while the shots are being blasted at you and then automatically deflect back at the enemy. Not sure what to say about the lightsaber sound, but the music in this game does get repetitive and dull real fast. Hell, even when playing this game, I had to mute it and listen to different soundtracks from the Star Wars movies on YouTube, so yeah, there's not really much else to say about this game. Like, seriously. The only thing I can say is that there are 9 levels in this game, but I had no desire to keep playing. After about 10 minutes of playing the game, I was already bored of it. I'm sure some people would feel the same way, so I'm gonna go ahead and give my final thoughts and ratings for this game. Well, Star Wars Episode 1, Obi-Wan's Adventures, is the game that I checked out and played because I was curious to find out how the gameplay was. Plus, it gives me something to talk about and make a new review on. Okay, let's just get this out of the way. So this game was made in the year of 2000, and Star Wars Episode 1, Racers, for the Game Boy Color, was made in the year of 1999. They're both Star Wars games for the Game Boy Color, and Star Wars Episode 1 Racers that was made in 1999 had better graphics than this game and don't have a lack of color visuals. Now, that's sad. It's probably because it was made by a different developer, since this game was made by Hot Gen and Episode 1 Racers for the Game Boy Color was developed by LucasArts. Maybe that's why. I don't know. So in conclusion, Star Wars Episode 1, Obi-Wan's Adventures, is not a game I would recommend for any Star Wars fans to play, unless you're just someone who collects Star Wars video games or just curious to play it. I don't know, but there's no problem with that, of course. So, with Star Wars Episode 1, Obi-Wan's Adventures for the Game Boy Color, I don't know what to rate it, so I'll just give it a thumbs down. So that's it for that game. Now moving on to the next game, Star Wars Arcade for the Sega 32X. Alright, so this game was developed by Sega Interactive, and it was published by Sega. Okay, cool. So this game was first released in 1993 to arcades. This game was played on an arcade machine where you need some coins to play it. Well, duh. 
After it was out on the arcade machine, the game was later released for a console, which is the Sega 32X in 1994. Well, that's it for the basic information, so let's go ahead and begin. So this game starts off with a little intro, where it shows the Star Destroyer shooting at the Rebel Blockade Runner. That tells you that this game is set in Episode 4, A New Hope. Now moving on. Okay, so after we push start, we have this. We have to choose a game by picking 32X for an enhanced Star Wars with extended and more challenging levels, or just pick arcade to play the regular arcade mode itself. I guess I'll just pick one from there, so I'll just select the arcade mode, and then it wants me to choose a mission. Alright, so I'll just pick Rebel Attack. Like I actually read instructions or do any kind of stuff that relates to tutorial. Unless I have no choice to do so, but here I have a choice. Another option, well that's just great. Um, I can select pilot or pilot and gunner. I don't think it matters, so I'll just pick one so we can finally get started. Then we have a little cutscene showing Admiral Akbar telling all wings to prepare to jump into hyperspace and to stand by to receive orders. And so the ship goes into hyperspace and takes off from there. So the objective is to wipe out enemy TIE fighters and this is where the gameplay starts. So from there just do what it says and shoot the enemies. Man I am not good with this game. I got some kills but I do have a caution alert telling me that I'm going too fast. Seriously? I didn't even know that I controlled the speed of the ship. I'm just trying to move it around to see if I can shoot the enemy TIE fighters. Plus the screen right there in the middle shows you where that TIE fighters are at. I'm doing the best I can to kill them but they're just too fast for me to shoot or I just suck at this game. At least I'm giving it a try. No wait, and where's the Master Yoda? Do or do not, there is no try. When I managed to kill at least one TIE fighter or TIE bomber, I feel like Luke Skywalker in Episode 4 New Hope when he got excited that he got a kill and said, I got him, I got him, then Han Solo would say to me, Also keep in mind, I'm playing this on the emulator, so pushing down moves up, and pushing up lets you move down. Those controls mess me up a little bit, and I don't like it when the game sets the controls that way. At the top it shows a time limit as you're playing the game. So, if you don't kill all the enemies before the time runs out, you lose. Then you have a little cutscene here showing Darth Vader saying that you underestimate the power of the dark side. After that, it's over. You can see your score or rankings to see where you're at. I know, I didn't do a good job, but I tried the best I could. Not only you can pilot the X-Wing, but you can also pilot the Y-Wing as well. From the gameplay as you saw, it was played in first person perspective, but you can play in third person if you wanted to, but I just like to play in first person so I can feel like I'm actually a pilot in the ship. With third person, it looks cool, but I can't really see much as I'm flying or shooting. So this game basically have three levels, and I know that's not a whole lot, despite the fact that it was an arcade game that was on an arcade machine when it first came out. I seriously don't know what else to talk about, so I think I'm just going to go ahead and get ready to end this video. So therefore, this game is pretty interesting is all I can say. And it's not meant to be taken seriously because it was released for the arcade machine. So therefore, I really don't know what to rate this game, but I think it's really playable, despite the fact it was just an arcade game. Yeah, we all get that. So I will give this game a thumbs up and there you have it. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed the review video with those two games. Did the best I could, so yeah. If you enjoyed this video, then click the like button below, comment if you want to, and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Plus to check out more contents along with some new reviews from me, so that's it. Follow me on Twitter and Ask.fm, link is in the description. So thanks for watching, and may the force be with you. See you guys next time, and peace out, and remember, let the Wookiee win.